So welcome everybody. I'm glad to have you all with me. I'm gonna jump right in. Um, basically, just a little bit about myself. Uh, I started trading. My interest in trading began in 2005, after actually saving $20,000 from an accounting job that I had at the time and not knowing what to do with it. So I read about Warren Buffett and found out that the second richest man in the world made all his money from investing. I read about a 21-year-old kid in New York who had made a million dollars the year before. And I thought, you know, it's very competitive. So I thought if he can do it, not only could I do it too, I would blow him out of the water. So I decided, you know, that's what I wanted to do. I opened a trading account and out of the 20 that I had in my bank account, I funded it with 16. I left 4,000 for living expenses, rent and whatnot, right? Um, in six months, I made $10,000 from 16. Now my account was at 26. Um, it, six months later, and I was up at almost $50,000, not quite 50, just under 50. And I did that by playing swing long in a, at the time, a bullish market. Uh, and then came the brilliant idea from my PhD brother, who was just as amazed at my results as I was. He told me, if you can make this kind of money from buy and hold, by buying and holding, imagine how much more you can make through uh, investing or trading actively. He was actually referring to the list of stocks on the, um, the top gainers, top losers. And uh, of course, I listened to his, his advice. He's the brainiac in the family. Started trading act actively every morning. And then within a few months, I believe two or three only, I lost everything that I made, right? What do you think happened? I lost everything that I had made and plus $15,000 more. Of course, that's when I realized that I had gotten lucky and that I didn't really know as much as I quite as much as I thought I I knew and uh, so I started scouring the internet for trading resources I came across a website called zax.com you can look it up it still exists today it's a financial website similar to Yahoo Finance or Google Finance now, at the time, Zax.com was running a, a one-year trading challenge, and the winner of that challenge received a $100,000 job offer. So I participated, and of course, I didn't win. Actually, I did poorly, but I did receive something better than winning the challenge. I became friends with the number one trader in that contest. He had turned if $100,000 into 2 million in less than a year. And he told me that he had been a full-time trader for the last 15 years and that he learned it all from a small company called Pristine. I had never heard of such a company. So he encouraged me to visit the website, you know, take their classes, which I did. I took the TPM class and every other class that they offered. And of course, the rest was is history, okay? That's how my trading journey started. Now, why am I showing you this? Well, to tell you a little bit about myself maybe, but also really to tell you that, you know, making it and not making it, like there's nothing special about me. Trust me on this. Ask my girlfriend, she will tell you the same. <laughs> there's nothing special about it. I don't have any special talents or sk skills or, I do have quite a bit of determination. I've always been driven, even, uh, even as a kid. I learned to be competitive and driven by playing sports. And, um, and I took trading seriously. I was really serious about it. I didn't want to do it for, uh, for the excitement that sometimes it brings or the suspense or the, you know, the, the things that some people are, that, that it attracts some people too. So, you know, the ones that have sometimes, you know, gambling, compulsive gamblers or 
they're attracted to trading, but that wasn't me. I, I was really serious about it. That's it. That's all. But I don't have any special, you know, if I can do it, you definitely can. And I believe in my heart of hearts that everyone can do it. Not everyone will do it, but anyone can can become successful in trading. Now, I do want to teach you something that is near and dear, something that's like this lesson is really important to me, and I, fought, I use what I'm about to teach you in my everyday trading. There are 7,553 ways to lose money day trading. I counted them, 7,553. Here's my absolute best advice on how not to do it, okay? On how not to lose to, to, you know, to, to be one of the, to, to have one of those uh, methods that loses money. Focus on plays that have a catalyst driving the price of the stock. Again, focus on plays, on trades that have a catalyst driving the price of the stock. Don't waste your time trading stocks that are not moving or stocks that lack momentum. Now, the catalyst is what creates momentum, okay? So you don't even have to figure out because that's another issue. How do I how can you tell whether a stock has momentum or not? How can you tell? Well, if there if it has a catalyst, you're 50% there. So focus on stocks that have a catalyst. In other words, trade what I call strategies, not just patterns. Okay? Now you might say, what is a strategy? Now, actually, what is a pattern? A pattern is, you know, just go to Google, type trading patterns, top trading patterns, and a bunch of pictures will come up. A bunch of charts and patterns will come up. That's what I call, th those are patterns. That's not what I trade. What I trade is what I call strategies. Now, what is a strategy? Trading strategy simply means marrying a macro event to a micro pattern. So I do use a lot of these similar patterns that you can just Google, uh, that you can look up on the internet, but I only do them if they have a macro event, which is the catalyst. So give me a catalyst and give me a high probability trading pattern, then I, that's something I would be interested in. That's what a strategy is. There are several, there are several catalysts that you can look for. The easiest and most prevalent that happens every single day, whether you're in earnings season or not, are gapping stocks, stocks that gap. We have, I put together a list of gappers that I, sh that I send to the room every single day. And sometimes it's well over 100 uh, uh, gaps, well over 100 to pick from. That gives you an edge. Gives you an incredible edge. You can look for stocks that are showing extreme relative strength. You may not know why. Maybe they have a new CEO. They launched a new product. Who, who cares? I don't even look up the news. I truly don't. If it's showing extreme relative strength, extreme relative strength means extreme relative strength to the market, right? It's not just stronger than other stocks. It's showing it does you know it's not reacting to any kind of bearish move in the market. That's what extreme relative strength means. If it's showing failure, a failure, if it has a failure pattern, especially if it, if that failure pattern is on the daily chart, right? Because remember, I'm looking for a catalyst on a macro scale, on a macro time frame, which is daily, weekly, monthly, larger time frames, and I'm looking for a pattern on the on the micro, on the intraday time frames. So one, one minute, two minutes, five minutes, 15. Those are the four intraday time frames that I use. Some people use the, the 10 minute, the, the three minute. I don't, but you can. Some people, use, some people use the 30 minute. I use the hourly, but I don't really trade off of the hourly. I just use it as a larger time frame to establish a bias, to kind of give me a good idea of like a big picture of what's happening with the stock. So again, gapping stocks. Stocks that are showing extreme relative strength. Stocks that have that are displaying failure patterns on the daily charts. Or stocks that have wide range bars clearing significant resistance or support if the stock is breaking down. Those usually, and there's more, those are just four. 
those usually give you uh, uh, give you a good start like that's the catalyst that i look for all right now second step is find a high probability pattern a high probability pattern remember there's three steps first step is find the, cat the catalyst then find a high probability pattern you can do whatever patterns you want. I'll show you what patterns I look for, but if you're familiar with certain patterns that you really like to do, then go for it. In the morning, in the early part of the day, between 9.30 to 10.30, I'm looking at the one minute, two minute, or five minute time frame. That's it, I'm not looking at the 15, I'm not looking at the 30, because it's early in the day. Mostly, actually, between 9.30 to 10, I'm looking at the one minute. Between 10 to 10.30, I'm looking at the two minutes. And then 10.30 to 11.30, I'm looking at the five. But it doesn't, it's not, you know, it's not set in stone. So just keep in mind that in the morning, you're using the small time frames. 10th, late morning, 10th, early morning, small time frames. Late morning, 10.30 to 12 o'clock, use the five, 10, or 15. For me, mostly, I don't use the 10, so it's the five or the 15. But if you use the 10, that's fine too. After 12 noon, I focus exclusively on the 15, personally. But some people, like I said, like to use the 30 minutes. Then go for it. Okay? So find the, find the catalyst. Find the stock that has a catalyst. And drill down to the smaller time frames to see if, it, if you can find the high probability pattern. And any pattern applies. I like to do pullbacks, breakouts. Continuation patterns, mostly the one, two, three pattern, or reversal setups, climactic buy setups, climactic sell setups. Sometimes I will also do failure patterns, such as the W pattern or the M pattern. Those are failure patterns. But the va vast majority of my plays are going to be either pullbacks, breakouts, or one, two, three patterns. Those make up probably 85% of the setups that I that I take. Those three. If you think about it. Stocks can only correct through price by pulling back or through time by going sideways. So in reality, you can only really do whatever pattern that you use. It's going to be just a subset of either a correction through time or cor correction through price. That's it. All right. So those are the patterns that I use. Now, the third step is time your trade with the market. Okay. Time your trade. Your trades as follows. If the market is bearish, look for weak stocks basing at the low of the day or that have a counter rally to resistance or the declining 20. That's okay too. So if the market is bearish, look for weak stocks at the low of the day, basing hopefully at the low of the day. If not, if they're not basing, maybe they're on a counter rally move to the declining 20 MA on whatever time frame you found the pattern, okay? Don't get confused on whatever time frame that you where you found the pattern. Now, if the market is bearish but is way oversold, it's down a lot, then what you could look for is extreme relative strength. Stocks that stayed at the high of the day. The market dropped really hard, it's down 2%, really extended, maybe is ready for a bounce, and you, you the stock that you're looking at stayed at the high of the day. That's called extreme relative strength. It's not impacted by the market at all. Or you can also look to play things that are down just like the market, but even more so. So they're going totally climactic. So you can look for extreme relative strength or climactic biceps. What people do a lot, and this is what I also started, you know, when I started trading, that's what I did too. When the market was bearish, I focused on the really bullish stocks. And that's not the right thing to do. You want to play in the same direction, in the direction of the market, in the same direction as the market, right? You don't want to be looking to play long when the market is bearish. Nine out of 10 times, you want to be looking to play short if the, when the market is bearish. And you want to be looking to play long when the market is bullish. Only when the market gets oversold can you look to, to go against it. Can you look to you know play the reversal? Does that make sense? But the vast majority of the time, don't be looking to play long in a bearish market. Similarly, don't be looking to play short in a bullish market. So if the market is bullish, look for strong stocks basing at the high of the day or on a pullback to support slash the rising 20 MA. 
if the market is bullish but way overbought like this don't abuse this don't go against the market unless it unless you know how to tell you can easily tell that the market is really overbought if so then you can look for extreme relative weakness the market is up two three percent and you found the stock that's at the low of the day that has a catalyst on the daily chart and has a wonderful intraday pattern that you know and love that you're completely familiar with that you like to do every time you you find it okay so you can look for extreme relative weakness or something that went totally berserk went climactic to the upside that's how you time your trades with the market now what if the market is sideways well then look to go long bullish stocks when the market is at the bottom of the range and short bear stocks when the market is at the top of the range i you know i rarely have to deal with this you know market sideways markets i mean it happens but most of the time it's either a really bullish market or really bearish market that i have to worry about uh timing my trade with does that make sense when the market is sideways you can you know you don't have to wait for the bottom of the range to go long it's ideal if there is a, a clear range it's ideal or the top of the range to go short that's ideal but sometimes if the market is sideways then it's just really choppy in which case you can play long or short doesn't really matter now one thing that i utilize in my trading like crazy i do it on with every trade that i take is i use amplifiers enhancers things that make the setup even better like when you go to google as i told you earlier and you look up a breakout or a pullback do you know what the what the the different things that make that setup even better than just every other breakout out there or every other pullback out there yes there are certain amplifiers actually there's 10 of them that i teach in the tpm class that make the setups better right so amplifiers are key to predicting market tops and bottoms and they're key to picking out the best of the best when it comes to patterns here's an example of the process right here's an example find a catalyst is the first the first step so we can see that the daily chart is the daily chart breaking out okay so that's that's the catalyst if you have a pattern on the daily chart and the pattern in this case is a breakout that's a catalyst now i need to drill down to the smaller to the intraday time frames and find the high probability pattern i'm very familiar with the one two three i love this pattern okay great let's do it i got a one two three setup right here long over that top and tail bars high stop under the red bars low and this the third step before i take the play is i want to make sure the market is also uh, is bullish right and as you can see the market here was doing its own breakout so i got a catalyst on the daily a, a pattern that i know and love on the intraday and a bullish market that, that itself was breaking out. Very, very simple, very easy. Now, how many people follow this three-step process? Not many, I'm sorry to say. Not a lot of people because they just, they get lost in the maze. I mean, they just get lost, right? And they don't slow down to follow, to make sure they, they have the process down. Here's another, another example where the stock was actually transitioning on the 60 minute chart so this is called a transition c or breaking down on the on the 60 minute with a void below there's not clean clear air below no support at all that's the catalyst the intraday pattern was a t3 breakdown notice how the stock dropped to the low of the day and based at the low of the day so guess what ha what's going to happen when the stock breaks low of the day oh yeah it's going to drop it actually didn't drop that much but that's the second step is find a pattern that you are that you know and love but to make sure before you take it that the market is also in your you know going in your in the direction that you're trying to, to play the market is bearish which it was the market was pretty bearish okay now here's another example in this case it was a gap but the play happened the day after the gap 
I normally don't play stocks the day after they gap, except when I like the gap and the stock didn't move much on the day of the gap. So as you can see on this day, the stock didn't actually, it broke out, it was a nice gap over red bar from the 20 MA, beautiful, but it didn't go. Guess what? The next day is usually when it moves. So I like the catalyst on the data chart. I like the gap. I look at the intraday and I see that in it start, the, started the day off with two wide range green bars. That's really bullish. Love it. And then it pulled back. So I got a pullback here to the rising 20. That's beautiful. And I can see that it, the pullback was good on not just the five minute, but also the 15 minute. That's called multiple time frame alignment. That's a huge deal when there's multiple time frame alignment. When the stock actually is showing you a bullish pattern, if you're trying to play it long, on multi across multiple time frames. The most important time frames to be in alignment with the with the pattern time time frame, with the main time frame where you found the setup, is the one time frame larger. In this case, the 15. Some people use the 10. Then in that case, it would be the 10, but I don't. So the 15 and the one time frame smaller. So the two minute or the three minutes if you use the three minute. You see what I mean? So you want the time frames surrounding them uh, that are uh, you know uh, close to them to the time frame where you found the pattern to be in alignment with it. And so in this case the 15 was perfect. And then another buy setup later on. So perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. Now I'm going so this this whole lesson is taken out of the TPM class okay and I'm going to be teaching the TPM class this weekend it's a two-day class okay I want to show you the table of contents first this is the table of contents for the TPM class that I'll be teaching this weekend so the first chapter is on the simple art of trading review then a closer a closer look at trends transitional analysis how stocks transition from stage one to stage from sideways stages to uptrends to downtrends you see what I mean uh, we, then we start to talk about the the various strategies we, we go over the the pullback strategy and the counter rally and sell setup so the t3 buy setup t3 sell setup then as I said you know any anyone out there can find the pullback play but but can you find also the amplifiers that that make it a lot better you see what I mean? This is why scanners usually don't really work that well because it's hard to program amplifiers. There's 10 of them that, that we teach and that I teach in the TPM class. So it's hard to find those amplifiers. It's, it's easy to find buy setups, but it's really hard to find amplifiers with those buy setups and make sure that it also has a catalyst on the daily chart and it's timed correctly with the market. So I'm all for automating your trading and, and having a scanner do the the scanning for you but it's hard unless you can program all these things at the same time right so we we talk about the key strategies we start off with the buy setup sell setup simple stuff but we also add in the amplifiers that are applicable to 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 stages 2 and 4 these are the uptrends and the downtrends and then the amplifiers that are applicable to stages one and three. These are the sideways stages, okay? And then we also talk about the amplifiers that form, that occur in transitions when the stock is transitioning, okay? Now, you might not know what the word transitioning means. I'll show you this weekend what I mean. And then we talk about the second strategy, which is the breakout and breakdown, okay? Then we talk about the one, two, three pattern. When I say we talk about, I mean, I give you step-by-step -step instructions. You know, place your order here, put your entry order, place your stop right here, manage it this way, and then this is where your target is for this pattern or that pattern or the other pattern. I mean, it is pretty precise stuff. It's not like, oh, here's the pattern, good luck. Nope, I give you the exact entry for every pattern that I show you that we go over. Then I also go over the climactic setup, climactic buy setup, climactic sell setup. I review it, I go over the five criteria, it's actually four plus one optional um, for the climactic plays. These are the reversal plays. This is the only time or the only way I go against the trend 
is when the stock or the market goes climactic. Okay. Then we talk about money management for the trade and for the account, because without money management, none of this matters, right? And then we do a section on putting it all together. So it's like a summary of everything that we, the, the, the steps that need to be followed on every trade. So if we were to just give you a pre, if I were to give you a preview of what the first chapter is, I'm actually not gonna do the whole chapter because it involves learning about master trader key number one, master trader key number two, and then combining the two master trader keys. Those are like, that's the foundational stuff. But that takes time. That would take me a couple hours probably. So I'm just gonna show you the very first section of the first chapter in the TPM class to just show you what it looks like, okay? And the quality of the stuff. So the first section is about candlesticks and why we use candlesticks and how to use candlesticks. So just the first slide is, you know, we talk about why we use candlesticks as opposed to bar charts because candlesticks give you the story of what really happened. Candlesticks are all about comparing the close of that, of that bar, of that candle, compared to the open. And if a stock closes above where it opened, then it's bullish, obviously. If you bought that stock, then you made money, right? If it closed, if you bought it at the open and it closed above where it opened. Whereas Western bar charts, they compare the close of the current candle that we're looking at to the prior candle. It doesn't give you that same story, that same narrative. Here's what a candle looks like. There are five reference points to understand when it comes to candlesticks, five. The open is at the bottom of that green. If it's a, if it's, if the, if the candle is color coded green, it means that it closed higher than it opened. So the open is at the bottom of that green. The close is at the top of that green. And then obviously the high is the highest point in that candle. The low is the lowest point. And what's the fifth thing? I said there's five reference points. That's four, right? The open, the close, the high, and the low. What's the fifth? It's the body of the candle, right? The bigger the body, the more bullish it is, okay? And when the stock closes, when the candle closes higher than where it opened, it is said that bulls won the battle because every candle is a battle between buyers and sellers. Now, when the if it's color-coded red, it means the open was at the top of that red, the close was at the bottom of the red, and then obviously the low and the high are the same, whether it's a, you know, a, bull, a green candle, red candle, or any color you use. And so if if the stock closed lower than where it opened, it means there were the sellers were more aggressive. You might have heard people say there were more more sellers than buyers. That's not possible to have more sellers than buyers. For every seller, there's a buyer. But it means the sellers were the ones that were more aggressive. Okay that pursued, that were just dumping shares at any price or whatever, right? So that's what that means. Then we go over the 12, the only 12 candles that you can possibly get. There are no other candles than these. And I explain how each one of them forms and what it means. We said if a stock closes, if a candle closes higher than where it opened, it, that means the bulls won. It means it's a bullish candle, but not necessarily always the case. For example, the second candle over here, notice how it opened here. How do I know it opened here? Because it's, it's a green candle. We said the open is at the bottom of the green and it closed over here. But what about this big tail? How did it form? This tail formed, initially the stock rallied all the way up there, but before the candle had finished forming, it had come all the way back down to close in the bottom third. That's pretty bearish. So initially the buyers were in total control and then they lost that control. And the sellers showed up and forced prices lower to close in the bottom third. So even though if you were in the stock before the candle had formed or bought it at the open, it, this could be a daily candle, one minute candle. This applies to every time frame. does not not really matter at all. If, um, if you bought it, you would have made money. But the, the message of that the candle was sending is telling us is it, this is bearish what happened was bearish even though again in theory it's bullish because it closed higher than where it opened does that make sense so similarly this 
bottoming tail bar number nine, candle number nine, that's actually a bullish candle, even though it's closed below where it opened at. See what I mean? So, so there are, so we go over every candle and we talk about how it forms and what it means. Like, what does this candle mean? Number 10 and number five. And which one is bullish, which one is bearish? Does it matter that it, each candle has a small body? What does it actually mean? You know what I call this candle? Anybody know? This is the... Uh, I don't see any correct answers. Okay, I'm going to leave it a secret until this, until the weekend. And we'll talk about it on the weekend. Sometimes the candle doesn't have a body at all. It doesn't have any green or any red at all. That's because the open and the close were exactly at the same price. So there is all it's just black, right? But it's far from the like number this candle at the bottom, number 12, that's far from being bullish. That's really, really bearish. Number 11, that's a bottoming tail candle. That's really bullish, actually, even though it closed exactly where it opened that. So in theory, it shouldn't be. Then we talk about narrow body bars, right? And what they mean. Narrow range bars, narrow body bars are a really are excellent reversal signals if they form after a period of selling or after a period of rallying. They're excellent reversal reversal bars. That's what they actually mean, right? Then we discuss that. Then we talk about wide range bars. Wide range bars that form after a period of, of sideways action ignite, they start the trend in that direction. So you don't wanna be betting against them. You wanna be actually going with them. If the wide range bar happens to form after a period of selling, that signals the end of the move, exhaustion. Does that make sense? So, so we talk about wide range bars in detail. I'm not really, I'm just here, I'm just going over them quickly. I'm not teaching much. We talk about topping tail bars, what they mean, right? Does the color matter, whether it's green or red? Does it? What about the size of the candle? Does that matter? What about the size of the topping tail? Not every candle that has a topping tail is called a topping tail bar. Okay, like most candles have a little bit of tail, tailage <laughs> on either side, right? So those are not bottoming tail or topping tail candles. This is a topping tail candle. That was a topping tail candle. The other tails are not significant at all. Topping tail candles, you know what that means? It means the buyers got rejected. Higher prices were rejected. So distribution occurred. So the buyers were in control and then they got slammed. That's actually quite bearish. Okay, especially if it if the if the color changes, flips from being a really big green candle to a totally red candle. Right? That's a great reversal signal. Now Topping tail and bottoming tail candles, there's a way to make them even more bearish or more bullish. There's actually a way to, you know, there's certain types of bottoming tail, topping tail candles that make the setup even that much better. Okay. And those are called range expansion candles. So range expansion, R-E-B-T, range expansion bottoming tails, range, range expansion topping tails. R-E-T-T, -T. those are the single most bullish bearish candles in existence, okay? Then we talk about, uh, again, we talked, about, you know, we talked about how wide range bars can end a move, wide range bars can ignite a move. This is exactly the same usage, um, the, the same way we use volume. If volume happens to form, if, it, if you get a pickup in volume, at the big uh, at the beginning of a move if if you get a spike in volume while the stock is going sideways and it starts to break down that's actually professional selling so you want to hop on board and short that stock okay but if you get a spike in volume at the end of a move after you know multiple red bars in a row and then a wide range bar that's actually exhaustion volume that's people panicking out of the stock it means it's very close to the bottom. You see what I mean? Um, all right. So wide range bars ignite, wide range bars end. And we talk about reversals. 
you know, figuring out the level of potency. How can you tell whether a reversal is potent or not? There are certain things that we look at, such as the size of the candle, the number of candles, and the level of retracement. Okay, so for example, that was pretty potent. This one wasn't very potent because we didn't retrace much. Also, the candle was small compared to the, the initial candle. This is very potent. It gapped down and then it, it retraced not just the entire candle, but another, you know, this much more. So that's like 150% retracement. That's not very potent because it, it gapped up, but got sold and retraced about like one third of the candle, not even one third. So we discuss the, you know, the reversals. We talk about pivots, how they form, because pivots um, is how you can, uh, is how trends form. So we talk about low pivots, which is, what's a low pivot? Low pivot is when the buyers take back the control from the sellers. The sellers were in control, and then now the buyers took back the control. And then a high pivot is bearish because it, cr it gives you a reference point when the sellers, when the buyers lost the control to the sellers. So it becomes an, a focal area of resistance. But there's different types of pivots. Not every pivot, not all pivots are created equal. Not at all, right? There's rounding tops, there's square tops, and rounding bottoms, square bottoms. There's bottoms with shakeouts, there's V pivots. So there's all kinds of pivots. This is just, I'm just, I'm not trying to even teach very much. I'm just showing you what it is that we go over that you learn in the TPM class. And then as I said, pivots create trends. If you have consecutive higher lows, one through six, those are pivot lows or low pivots, consecutive higher highs, that's letters A through D, those are, that's what creates an uptrend. So an uptrend is defined as higher lows and higher highs. Now, we also have other ways to, to, that we use to define the trend, not just higher highs, higher lows, but that's the most important part of the trend actually. Does it have consecutive higher highs, consecutive higher lows? What about the 20? What about the railroad tracks between the 20 and the 40? So there's various things that we, that goes into analyzing a trend, but the first one is trend analysis. I mean, is the, is the pivot analysis. Okay, and then the same applies for a downtrend. A downtrend, you get a downtrend when you have lower highs and lower lows. The highs are A through F. The lows are one through six, seven, actually. Those are all consecutive lower lows. That's what creates a downtrend. If you're looking at a monthly chart, this kind of trend can last for years. I'm not even exaggerating, years then you're able to take advantage of it as it drops over multiple years or as it goes up multiple years. Did you know that a lot of stocks, I would say the vast majority of stocks, like maybe 75%, 85% of stocks between 2007, 8, when, they, when the market bottomed, the market bottomed in November of 2008 and then double bottomed, retested the prior low in March of 2009. So the Qs made a higher higher low. The Qs is the Nasdaq. The SPY made a lower low. So retested in March of 2009. Actually, March 9th, 2009. So between March 9th, 2009, and I would say November 2000, 2021. So March 9th, November to, to November 2021, the vast majority of stocks were in a monthly uptrend, as well as the market. It never it did not break the monthly uptrend up until, I don't know, not even November of 2021. It happened in 2022, last year. So that's how you build wealth, is playing these long-term trends on the larger timeframes, okay? Um, all right, and then we talk about also when the pivots are not consecutively higher or consecutively lower, when they are about the same level. When, when that's sideways trends. How do you take advantage of it? Can you do, can you short every pivot high or pivot low? Can you buy every pivot low? Not really, you can't. So, so and that's what forms the sideways trend. So again, I'm just showing you like the first section of the first chapter uh, of the TPM class. And I hope you're impressed. Uh, I've been teaching this 
since 2000, since 2010. So 13 years, yeah, 13 years. I started in the summer of 2010 uh, teaching this class. We have updated it numerous times over the years, but every time I teach it, I get really excited and I just love it. I enjoy it so much because it just, it's such a logical system uh, for, it gives you a logical, rational approach to the market. This is what I loved about the pristine method when I learned it, when uh, Scott Redler learned it also, um, is it makes sense. Like the logic is intrinsically valid. Whereas if you go, you know, if you ch check out other schools, they might say, you know, buy the stock every time it crosses, if the 20 MA crosses over the 50 MA, the, tw the 50 period moving average crosses over the, the 200. Why? I don't know. It just works. Buy it. I, I, I never, I can never trade a methodology that doesn't make sense to me, that I don't really understand. Because you know what? Sure, I'll buy it uh, on this stock, but then on the next stock, I'm not going to have the confidence to do it because I, I don't understand the logic behind it. But with this methodology that I learned long time ago, that I now teach, it makes sense. Like the you, you know whichever way, however way you you look at it, the logic, as I said is intrinsically valid and it's rational logical objective and it can be applied to every time on every stock can be, can be applied to every stock on every time frame i mean what more can you ask what more can you ask you see what i mean so anyways i really really hope that you join me this saturday i'm going to be teach uh, saturday sunday it's a two-day class because i think you'll love it i know you will but you gotta be serious about trading. If you're not serious, I think you'll probably get bored or something. You know, I wouldn't do it if you're not serious about trading. But you know what? If you're not serious about trading, I wouldn't even trade because you're. It's very, very hard to make money. I think if you're not really into this. So if you're into it, you're committed, you you're serious about it, you're passionate about it, then boy, go for it because it's extremely rewarding, extremely rewarding. Do you want to get rich quick stock trading scheme? Well, then look elsewhere. Want unsexy but proven tips from a professional trader? Well, then I'm your guy. I'm sharing these trading methods for free in my ebook, Unsexy Trend Analysis Secrets That Generate Beautiful Profits. This book is focused entirely on the same trading strategies that I use and refine every single trading day. Now, I'm not promising that these methods will make you an overnight millionaire, of course but they are the foundational skills behind my many years of success and have benefited the countless students that I've shared them with. I can't wait to share my methods with you and I know I will be hearing from you soon. Hit that link now.